Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. Today, I want to talk about a really important subject, and it's prayer. And, you know, prayer is a, is, is a word that a lot of people talk about, and, and they talk about it, but not a lot of people pray. I, I think prayer is difficult because we're so used to communicating with people we can see. And, but you have to understand that everything that you see was created by the unseen. The unseen is more powerful than what you see. Prayer does work. There's sayings about prayer like this, a family that prays together, stays together. And, and we say there's, there's, a, there's a sign on the freeway, there's somebody making all these signs, I don't know, they're on every freeway, they're orange, white, and blue or something like that. And, and, they, and this is what it says, prayer changes things. And, and it, so, so what is prayer? Prayer has two parts to it. And I just came up with my own definition to simplify it for me. And the first part of prayer is I speak to God. I speak to God and I bring my cares, my requests, and my weaknesses to Him. I bring, I speak to God, I bring my cares, my cares, my requests, and my weaknesses to God. That's the first part of prayer. But it, thank God it doesn't end there. Now it's God's part. The second part of prayer is God speaks to me. He comforts me. He strengthens me. He guides me and reveals himself to me. So prayer is a time of communion and communication with God. And you might be asking, do you actually hear God? And I would say this, I don't hear him in an audible voice. I hear him in my spirit. And you say, well, how, is, how do you hear God? It's like your conscience is speaking. And I've made major decisions based on hearing the voice of God. I know my voice and I know God's voice, but I've also learned another voice is the voice of the devil. The voice of the devil also speaks. You're no good. You're not worth it. You're never going to amount to nothing. Those are demonic voices that if you believe them, they'll become your reality. God doesn't speak that way. So how do we know it's the voice of God? Because the voice of God always speaks in agreement with the Word of God. So the more you know the Word of God, the better you're going to be able to decipher the voice of God. We are here in this building because of the voice of God. I am here speaking because I've heard the voice of God through communication. That means prayer is something that you should be doing all the time. You shouldn't hang up on God. He should always be on the line because he's always speaking, directing your life if you let him. So we, we, got, in, we got into this building. So how did we get into this building? I remember I was in a staff meeting and we were in a staff meeting and a thought came from God. And I told Robert, I go, Robert, there's a building on the north side of the city. He goes, have you seen it? I go, I haven't seen it. I go, let's go right now. It's over there somewhere. And I remember me and Robert drove to this building. I, I've been in this city for 10 years. I never saw this building. We came up to the building, drove. It looked like we had a honing device. We show up to this building, never saw the building. And I looked at it and I said this, that's the future way world outreach. And so it said, wow, does that really happen? It happens. What's even greater than that, he said, now call, find the get, the, get the number, call the owner. I want you to get this. We're calling the owner with no money. Because when God speaks, it doesn't always make sense. Because he's able to do more than you can do. All he needs is your faith. Come on, someone say, little faith. And so we call the owner. And then God says, set up a uh, meeting with the owner. And you know, there was another voice that spoke. It was my voice. And I said this, why are we going to set up a meeting with the owner? We have no money. And then the Holy Spirit speaks again. He goes, I didn't ask if you had any money. I told you to call the owner. 
So we call the owner up and we set up a meeting in, in Hollywood because the owner of this building lives in Hollywood. He has, a, he has like a whole block that he owns on Sunset Boulevard. We go see him with no money, just faith. God told us and we show up. I show up with uh, three or four of my staff members and we talk, he goes, how can I help you? And I said, we're interested in your building. And this building didn't have a sign on it. Uh, they looked like they were trying to lease it for years and there was no sign on it. It looked like it was just completely abandoned. And he goes, that building in San Bernardino? I go, yes, the building in San Bernardino. Then he said, what can, you, what, are, what can you afford? What are you talking about? What is your offer? And you know what I did? I gave him an offer that was crazy, but it was what we could do. You know what he told me? He told me this, you're crazy. I'd rather die than give you the building for that. And I remember we walked out of that building and I told my staff right away, it's not over. We're gonna get that building, we're coming back. Because God said we're getting the building. So I went back the second time. Because, and I went back when God told me to go back. And the second time I went back, I went back with a gift. God says, give them a gift. So I went to the Christian bookstore and I got them an eagle, like a, a, like a bronze eagle. And it said, we shall mount up with, in, with wings of eagles, a scripture. I put it on his desk and I go, this is a gift for you. He goes, okay. Are you still interested in the building? I go, yes. He goes, what's the offer? And I gave him the same offer. <laughs> and he goes, that's the same offer. I go, I know, but that's what we can do. So he goes, no, we can't do that. I already told you. And we left the building, but I left the present right on his desk. So every day he's going to be thinking about us. He's gonna be, there's a scripture right there, the eagle. We shall mount up with wings of eagles. We can do anything. So, so, the, so it was three months later, and God says, go back now. I go back the third time. He asks what the offer is, and I tell him, this is the offer. He goes, that's the same offer. I go, I know. He goes, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Why? Is that so important? Because we were being directed by God because God was speaking and he will lead you to greater places to accomplish greater things that you can ever accomplish. All you need is to hear the voice of God and begin to act on it. Come on, is God big? Is God good? Does God still speak? So God speaks after we pray. And I want to give you two things that we always should do. We should always, we should always do this. And in Luke 18, 1, it says this. Jesus told his disciples a story. He wanted to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So what does this scripture say? There's two things. One, we should always pray. We should always be in communication with God. Don't break communication with God. Now you might be saying, what is prayer? It's just communicating with God. And you say, well, how do I do that? Maybe it's like this, praising God, worshiping God, thanking God, making petitions to God. What he's saying is always keep God on your mind and always keep God on your mouth. Because what, the, what we're tempted to do is break our communication. Instead of praising or magnifying God, we magnify our problems, our difficulties. We start complaining, it's so hard. And instead of talking about how big God is, you start talking about how big your problems are and how bad your enemies are. Nothing is gonna change until you change your communication. What you're talking about, what you're meditating on. Praise should, should continually be in our mouth. It doesn't matter how bad things are, 
I will no longer, I refuse to focus on what's wrong. I, now, I, I make up my mind to focus on the answer, not the problem. I know there's a giant that you're facing, but the God that you're serving is bigger than your giant. Praise God, magnify God, worship God. That's prayer. So can you do this on, on a daily basis? Yes. You could wake up in the morning and just say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Good start. <laughs> you could do something like this. Lord, help me. I'm going to work today. I'm in sales and I need your help. I don't want to show up to work without your help. Send customers my way and give me favor. Well, say, well, does that work? It does. It definitely does. I was in sales for, for 14 years. And there'd be days that no one made a sale. I mean, you, you were with me. And you saw, I mean, you saw how prosperous I was. And it wasn't like I was the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I had a secret weapon they didn't know about. Well, they were looking, well, they were arguing and they were fighting and they were looking at the cute girl that walked in. I was praying. And I would, Lisa would ask me every day after work, how do, how do, how do we do? Because when we sold a car, she sold a car. And I go, well, or she'd say something, how'd the store do? And I go, well, the store didn't do real good, but we did. She goes, what happened with the store? Well, they sold one car. The good news is we sold it. So all the profit is ours today. And it all would start with prayer. And not only would I pray, I would expect. Because see, when, you have, when you're praying, you have a high level of faith. Because you're expecting something. A big part of seeing your life turn around is an expectancy. A big, the biggest problem we have is we're negative, doubtful thinkers. And you'll never accomplish anything great with no faith. Prayer is faith. Lord, help me today. Lord, me and my wife are having problems. We're not getting along really good. I'm asking you, Lord, to give me patience change my life, that I could love her and be more patient with her. You notice I said change me, not change her. Because too many, too many of you are praying for, to change her, and God said, no, the problem, it's half of the problem is you. And if we fix you, half the problem's fixed. <laughs> right? Or you could say, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I need provision. Open doors. Give me opportunities. Use me to speak to someone today to change their lives. And as you begin to pray and praise God, and you could do this on a regular basis while you're working, you could be saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so good. You could say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm feeling good right now. And I just thank you, Lord, that you're the one that gives me the ability to attain wealth. Man, I'm becoming richer every second. You could begin to communicate with God all day long. This is, what God, this is what God said. Never stop praying. When should you stop praying? In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, look what it says. Never stop praying. When should we stop praying? What? So when, we should, when should we take a break from praying and start cussing? Flipping people off and stuff. When, when should we start doing that? Like, where is there time for that and never? <laughs> Some of you guys are taking too many, too many cuss breaks. Too many negative breaks. Too many doubt breaks. Too many worry breaks. Too many anxiety breaks. And you wonder why there's no flow in your life. You're letting the devil interrupt, interrupt your flow. We got too many Christians that are only Sunday Christians. And then after Sunday, they have a big gap. No praise, no worship, no communication. And then they're wondering, man, I've been going to church every Sunday and my life's not changing. Because one service will not change your life if you're hearing the word and you're not practicing it when you go home. <laughs> Sales seminars don't work if you're just hearing it and not doing nothing about it. School doesn't work if you're, not, if you're just hearing stuff and it's going one ear out the other and there's no change in practice. 
character, right? So change happens when we're willing to change. There's a God that's available to us and he'll direct us. I remember when, because I hear God, and one of the advantages that I have, that I, 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 tell, I tell Robert, you know, I got a big advantage. He goes, what is it? I hear God. <laughs> and when, when, when I, what I mean by that is when I do something, I do it like a pit bull. That means when I lock my jaw on something, I don't let it go until it's done. And the reason I don't let it go because there's a reason I heard from God. And because I heard from God, until that situation turns into the word that I heard from God, I don't let it go. It doesn't matter how bad it looks, I don't let it go because I heard from God. The biggest, the biggest deficit that leaders have nowadays is that they're guessing through life. The biggest deficit that Christians have, that's why they say I heard, that this is why they say, they say, God told me this and next week God, God's like schizophrenic because next week he says something completely opposite. How could God speak two different things? He's not speaking two different things. You're not hearing from God. When you hear from God, you have faith. It's God. If God called me here, I got faith. It doesn't matter how bad, it doesn't matter how much resistance I get. It doesn't matter how, how many haters come against me. That has nothing to do, that does not change the word I got from God. We're not, our, we walk by faith, not by sight. You know what that means? You don't walk by your circumstances. You don't walk by CNN news. You don't walk by Fox news. You don't walk by the economy. You walk by faith. Faith means I heard from God, I believe what God says, and I'll stand on this word until I see it come to pass. And every day I'm waiting, I have more faith, not less faith. Because I believe I'm just one step closer. It's almost there. Okay. I remember when men ought to always pray. I remember when I was in the car business and... and and I just got transferred to the number one GMC store in the country. And I went into that store in La Puente and we broke the records. We broke all the sales records, profit records. It was an amazing, amazing month. That month I was gonna make a lot of money, $35,000 in a month. And I was there that Monday morning and I heard God. And he said, this is your last day. <laughs> God doesn't always tell you what you want to hear. But what he does tell you is right. So I call my wife up because I'm hearing God. I'm praying. I'm communicating with God. The, the whole store is celebrating. And I'm, I'm beginning to cry. <laughs> because I loved what I was doing. I was succeeding at what I was doing. It was good. He said, this is your last day. So I called my wife up and we just bought it. We just bought a 4,700 square foot home in Yucaipa on the base of the mountain. I just put two, three hundred thousand dollars in upgrades in the house. My dream house, circular staircase in the middle of the house. It's just, you know, just living, uh, put a brand new pool. It just, it was finally I had a house that was done. I, wow, we're living large and we just finished it. And I called Lisa up. And I said, Lisa, God told me this is my last day here. And I was hoping she would say something like this, pray about it, think about it. She said, oh, okay. <laughs> and I go, what? I go, honey, we got five kids, five girls. We have a $4,700 house payment. If I leave the job, there's no, there, there's, there's no unemployment and I'm not disabled. It's going to go from zero, from a hundred to zero in a second. And she told me, if God told you, then he will provide. She was, she was hearing God. She, there was another voice that she shut down and she was hearing God. You know what that's called?
prayer. So I go, God, what do I do? So I left that job, quit that day, no two-week notice, no four-week notice, gone. You know what they offered me? They offered me this. Marco, there was an offer. Marco, we'll give you $10,000 a month to just come in on Fridays and train for the organization. $10,000 a month just to train. And I told them, no. I go, I would love to do that, but that's not what God told me. So you know what they did? They brought all the managers in from the organization. And so I had to wait another hour or two. They brought all the managers in and they said, Marco, tell them what you just told me. And I said, well, I just heard from God. <laughs> and today's my last day. And they all just began to laugh, like, ah, you're dumb. You're dumb. You, and they started giving me all the objections. What about your kids? What about your wife? What about your life? What about your new house? What about, what about, what about your medical insurance? What about your retirement? What about the opportunities that you're leaving? And then I told them, because I heard from God through communicating with God. See, see the enemy, what he wants you to do, see, there's a trick. He wants us high, he wants us drunk, he wants us under the influ influence of anger and bitterness and worry. And there's a reason, because as long as you're under the influence of that, you're not hearing God. All those things cut you off from the voice of excellence, the voice of prosperity, the voice of success, the voice of wisdom. It cuts you off. And then you're sitting there with no brilliant ideas. No favor because you're off. Things aren't working out because you're on the wrong path dating the wrong people, saying the wrong things on the wrong websites. And then you wonder why things aren't right because you're disconnected from, from, from Nassau. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> and you're lost in space. There you go, I tied it all in right there. That's horrible to be lost in space and be disconnected from mission control. And some of you guys are disconnected from mission control. You're a Christian, but the enemy's taking over your thought process. He's taking over your mind. And this is what's happening. You're stuck with no new ideas. You're not hearing from God. And there's a voice of confusion. How do you know you're confused? You never know what you're doing. What are you doing? I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. What's your goals? I don't, I don't know. You're confused. Where are you headed? I don't know. You don't know. And the reason you, we don't know is because we're like sheep without a shepherd. We're not supposed to be sheep like without a shepherd. We're sheep that do have a shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. He leads me beside still waters, green pastures. And though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I don't fear no evil because the Lord is right there with me. His rod and staff comfort me. I'm not alone. Well, God said, well, what else? I go, God, what else? He goes, sell the house. I go, I just bought the house. He goes, sell the house. He goes, the church is in San Bernardino. Sell your house and move to San Bernardino. I go, but San Bernardino is the most dangerous city in California. <laughs> he goes, I, I put you there to help the people. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna help the people, you gotta live with the people. What about my kids? They're gonna go right in the same dude's school districts and I'm gonna protect them and they will be blessed. Go sell your house. Oh, okay. See, this is the idea. When you hear God, act on it. Because God will not give you a new message if you've not followed the last message. 
he'll keep on speaking the same message until you do that, and then you get new assignments. Many of us want new assignments, and we haven't even followed the last assignment. God says, I want you to start being consistent in your life. Show up to church. Consi you, you'll, never be cons you'll never be successful where you're not consistent. It's called discipline. Too many of us are motivated, and we're motivation junkies. You know what a motivation junkie is? You know what motivation is for? Motivation is to get you going. Discipline is to keep you going. See, we want to succeed, but we don't have the discipline and the consistency to succeed. God doesn't save you to make you a flake. He saves you to make you stable. Come on. He takes the instability and he puts you on solid ground so you could get some consistency in your life. Devotion consistency, church consistency, study consistency, growth consistency. You'll never get different results if you're not personally growing. And you'll never grow without any, without any new habits. Church needs to become a habit. Every week, you go to work. Every week, you come to the house of God. And you hear a word from God that gets you on track. He told me, sell the house. Like, what? See, some of you guys are, are what, what, what? You're like me. Trying to act you can't hear God. What? Okay. <laughs> So I go, okay, we're going to sell the house. We, we put the house up for sale, and, and I remember putting the house up for sale for double because God told me this is the number. Double the neighbor across the street. He goes, this is the number. My real estate agent comes over. She goes, you're crazy. There's no house in the area that is sold for that. I go, look, either you pull it up, you put it up for that, or I'm getting another real estate agent. This is the number. She goes, okay, I'll pull it up. That's what I thought. Because we ain't going to change God. Come on, we're not going to change what God said. So I put the house up for sale. Within a month period of time, a broker, a loan broker, owns a, bro a loan company, came to my house and he said this, I want your house for my Christmas party. Can you get out of here in one month? Like, I'll get out here before that. <laughs> <laughs> so we sold the house. He asked for a little discount. It didn't matter. We sold it for double my neighbor. By the time it was done, his house was still up for sale. My house was sold. Within 30 days, I was out of there. And I pulled out hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity. And I was able to live on that and give to the church for years so we could build this church. But God knows what he is doing. Within a couple years, the economy fell. Within a couple years, my house depreciated 50%. That guy that bought my house ended up, the house went into foreclosure. Within two years period of time, the business I work with, the company I work with went bankrupt. They shut their, all their stores down. God already knew that in two years, I wouldn't have had a job anyways. In two years, I would have lost all my equity in my home. He was already ahead of the curve. If we could just start listening to the voice of God, we could start getting ahead and start making some wise decisions. That's what you have to ask yourself. Is the lust worth it? Is the anger worth it? Is the unforgiveness worth it? Is the worth, worry worth it? Is the anxiety worth it? Is the unforgiveness worth it? Is the crazy thinking worth it? Is the complaining worth it? Because all those things stop you from praying. Then we're one, I'm so depressed. I feel so lonely. You're in the wrong train of thought. You stop worshiping. You stop praising. You stop, you stop thanking God. You, you, you just stop communicating. You're, you're no longer talking to God, and you're not even here. God, I feel all alone. He goes, of course you're not talking to me.
Okay. So this is what, this is it. This is a simple message. Two things that we should always do. We should always pray. <laughs> and then the second thing we should always do, we should never give up. The scripture says it. Jesus told his disciples a story. Man, he, he wanted to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So we should never what? Give up. Prayer, prayer and, I want you to guess, you should always pray and what? See, prayer gives you the strength not to quit. Prayer gives you courage to face the storms, the battles, the difficulties of life and not let the difficulties of life wear you down. You wear them down. Because this idea, if you don't pray, you're always quitting. Because you're not walking by faith, you're walking by feelings, you're walking by circumstance. So when the circumstances don't look good, you quit. You quit your church, you quit your ministry, you quit your marriage, you quit your business, you quit the ideas. Because you're not being led by faith, you're being led by feelings. I'm not feeling it anymore. There was an old song, feelings, whoa, 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 feelings. That's some of you guys. <laughs> Just put on that song all the time because we're emotional, we're angry, we're like, we're going up and down emotionally. There's no consistency. Come on, we got to get the word, we got to pray, and we got to stop quitting because you'll never get results You'll never get a victory quitting. you get a victory fighting, staying in the battle. We should never give up. We should what? When should we give up? That word, faint, that word give up means faint. That means lose consciousness. You just know, can't. You know what that's kind of, kind of, is you're sleepwalking. You're losing years of your life with no thoughts, with no purpose, with no clarity, with no word. You've lost connection. Something defeated you and it caused you to lose your consciousness. It means to grow weak. It means to lose courage and not continue. Prayer and strength go together. Lack of prayer and weakness also go together. Prayer and strength go together. Lack of prayer and weakness go together. Prayer and courage go together. Lack of prayer and, and being a coward go together. Prayer and victory go together. Lack of prayer and defeat go together. Prayer and a healthy relationship go together. Lack of prayer leads to dysfunctional relationships. They also go together. Prayer and clarity go together. Lack of prayer and confusion go together. We got to stop guessing and we got to start being led by the Spirit of God. How many receive a word from God today? Say it with me. We're going to pray always and not give up. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.